Welcome back to Monitors Unbox. Today I've got another highly anticipated monitor review for you. I'm checking out the LG 32GS95UE, which is the first 32 inch 4K 240Hz W OLED gaming monitor to hit the market. These should be available in various regions from next month, giving some serious competition to the 32 inch 4K 240Hz QD OLED monitors that we've been looking at recently. While some of the basic specifications to this W OLED panel are the same as the QD OLED panel, including resolution and refresh rate, LG Display's take has some notable differences. The big one is the introduction of dual mode functionality, which allows this display to operate at a lower 1920x1080 resolution, but with a higher 480Hz refresh rate, a unique configuration designed for high performance competitive gaming. The screen composition and coding is totally different to QD OLED as well, with LG opting for a matte finish. Pricing? Also rather interesting, LG are positioning this as the ultimate 4K gaming monitor with a pre-order price tag of $1400 US, while QD OLED alternatives sit in the $1000 to $1300 range. To justify that price, it has to be the best, and we'll explore that throughout this review. The design LG have gone with is all new for this 4K OLED, or at least it's something I haven't seen before. The usual dual legged stand design has been replaced with a flat six sided base, quite convenient if you want to put items on top of it. The display section, especially on the rear, is thinner than what you'd typically see from an LG LCD, and it's a minimalist design that I think looks great, especially in comparison to your typical gaming monitor design. It's definitely befitting of a premium price tag. On the front, I like how the OLED display dominates the experience and there's no branding below the panel, giving it a nice uniform look around all the bezels. However, the bezel thickness is a little larger than what LG advertises on their website. I'll put LG's marketing image beside an actual photo of the display so you can see for yourself. Not a huge deal really, it's thin bezels either way. Perhaps the one aspect of the design that I'm not a huge fan of is the material choice. Most of the outer surfaces are plastic, including the stand and rear of the display, which by itself is fine, but this specific plastic has a slight blue or purple tone to it. There are definitely purple highlights, like the cable management hole in the stand, but all of the other plastic has this purple grey appearance rather than what I expected it to be, which is normal, neutral, grey or black. I suspect this will be disappointing to people that wanted a grey or black monitor. But hey, there's RGB on the rear, which is quite well integrated into the design. The stand is sturdy and supports a great range of motion, including plenty of height adjustability. This display gets taller than any of the QD OLEDs I've tested so far, and there's support for swivel and pivot adjustment. Also, there does appear to be an active cooling fan inside the 32GS95UE, though it has been virtually silent during operation, and I only noticed it when putting my ear right up to the cooling vent along the top edge of the display. For ports, we have one DisplayPort 1.4 with DSC and two HDMI 2.1 48 gigabits per second ports with DSC alongside a two port USB hub, a fairly simple setup that doesn't feature USB-C or a KVM switch. Both DisplayPort and HDMI allow for the full 4K 240Hz, though DSC is required. If you want to use NVIDIA features that are incompatible with DSC, you can turn DSC off in the OST settings at the expense of reducing the refresh rate to 120Hz over HDMI. The OSD is controlled through a directional toggle on the rear of the display, just below the ports. It's LG's standard and easy to navigate interface, which includes a typical range of gaming and color features like crosshairs and an FPS counter, as well as black boosting in an sRGB mode. Dual mode functionality gets a separate dedicated button on the bottom edge of the display, although it can also be accessed through the OSD itself. A big talking point with 4K OLED panels has been text quality, and we saw significant improvements in this area with the QD OLED panels. I'm glad to say the same can also be said for W OLED. In fact, if anything, the improvement from 27-inch 1440p to 32-inch 4K is even larger on W OLED panels because text quality really wasn't that good on those 1440p panels. 32-inch 4K W OLED benefits from two major changes. The first is the updated subpixel layout, which is better suited to PC usage. W OLED moves from RWBG to RGWB. The same four subpixels, including that unique to W OLED white subpixel, but a rearrangement of them. The most important aspect is flipping the G and B, so it's now closer to the usual RGB stripe. In addition, we simply get a greater pixel density, going from about 110 ppi to about 140 ppi with the new 4K panels. 
This massively improves text quality and gets WOLED much closer to what you'd see from a 4K LCD panel of the same size. Where previously I'd found WOLED to have poor text clarity on 1440p monitors, certainly not to the level of wanting to do text heavy productivity work, I think the experience from these new 32 inch 4K panels is decent and very usable. Even at 100% display scaling it looks quite good, so in general I don't think this will be a major complaint with these monitors. As for text clarity comparisons between 4K, IPS LCD, QD OLED and W OLED, I think W OLED is still in third place. 4K LCD with current subpixel rendering techniques delivers the best text clarity with the least amount of artifacts. QD OLED has a very minor if not negligible amount of color fringing at the top and bottom of text, but in day to day usage this is hard to spot. W OLED has some shadowing artifacts, typically along the right side of text, which are greatly reduced compared to 1440p panels, but still noticeable in a side-by-side -side comparison with the three display technologies. So I think W OLED gets close enough to 4K IPS LCD to be highly usable, but it's still not quite as good. The screen coding used on this new 32 inch W OLED panel is similar to what we've seen on most other W OLED monitor panels, which is to say it has a matte finish. To some OLED enthusiasts, this is a controversial choice, although I think this is one of the better matte screen coatings. It's moderate in terms of grain, so those that hate any coating grain may not be a huge fan here, but it does do a great job of eliminating reflections, reducing diffuse light, and preserving OLED blacks. As this panel is directly competing with glossy QD OLEDs, there's a few things to know here. As W OLED panels use a different panel structure and composition, they reflect far less ambient light and so preserve the deep blacks of OLED in more conditions. In brighter environments, especially with lighting in front of the display, this type of matte W OLED will appear to have deeper blacks than a glossy QD OLED while also having the benefit of reducing mirror-like reflections. This makes W OLED with this type of matte finish my preferred choice for brighter environments where you can't control room lighting very well, like for example if you have to put your monitor opposite a window. In more dimly lit environments, or if you have the ability to place light sources mostly behind the display, glossy panels tend to look better as mirror reflections are less likely to appear and the lack of coating grain can produce a clearer, richer image with deeper blacks. This is also true for QD OLED versus W OLED as this type of setup has minimal ambient light reflection on the glossy QD OLED. In these situations I prefer QD OLED. In a dark room, like gaming with the lights off, there's almost no difference between glossy and matte W OLED versus QD OLED with the slight advantage to glossy panels as they don't have coating related grain. While the subpixel layout is greatly improved with this new panel and the screen coding is decent for office use, W OLED still is at risk of permanent burn-in. You shouldn't be concerned about burn-in if you're primarily using the display for dynamic content consumption like gaming or watching videos, but if you have static content on screen for long periods of time, like say the toolbar in an application or the Windows taskbar, that will likely burn in over time, which is why I don't recommend OLED as a productivity monitor. To make matters worse, LG do not offer a burn-in warranty with the 32GS95UE, a major weakness compared to most QD OLED alternatives that are offering 3-year warranties that include burn-in coverage. While LG are offering a 2-year warranty that includes the OLED display panel, there is no specific mention of burn-in, so we have to take a conservative interpretation and assume this means no burn-in coverage. Motion performance, like other OLED monitors, isn't particularly interesting as we're getting the same elite speeds we've seen on other monitors. At 240Hz, this is an extremely fast monitor with an average response time of 0.3 milliseconds, no appreciable overshoot, and excellent cumulative deviation. This is the same performance seen from other 240Hz W OLEDs and QD OLEDs, no difference there. We also get excellent numbers across the refresh rate range as OLED panels do not change in performance at lower refresh rates unlike LCDs. So for variable refresh rate gamers this is an excellent choice as you'll get superb performance even at moderate refresh rates like 120 or 60Hz. The only issue you'll see at these lower refresh rates is sample and hold motion blur. OLEDs are fast but speed can only take you so far at a refresh rate like 60Hz. As I've said in other OLED reviews there's really no difference between this OLED monitor and others that use OLED tech. So far, all the models I've tested have performed between a 0.2 and 0.4 millisecond average at their maximum refresh rate, which is a negligible difference. The big difference though is between OLED and LCD, with OLEDs being the clearly superior technology for motion performance. Typically, a 240Hz OLED is roughly equivalent to a 360Hz LCD in overall motion clarity due to its faster response times, but at the same refresh rate, the OLED will be better. 
Similar story in other performance charts. OLEDs have great performance across the refresh rate range as OLEDs can maintain the same level of speed at any refresh rate. In contrast, LCDs typically get slower as the refresh rate decreases or they produce more overshoot. So when we look at average cumulative deviation, OLEDs hold a significant lead over LCDs on average, and like the other graphs, this LG monitor is no different to other OLEDs. What is different though is the new dual mode functionality. By pressing a single button on the bottom edge of the display, the 32GS95UE changes from being in its 4K 240Hz configuration to operating at 1080p 480Hz. This is all done monitor side. The display does not expose both options to windows simultaneously, so you can't use the windows resolution drop down to change modes. You have to press the button, which to be honest is the better way of doing things as some games don't play nicely when you're using a non-default resolution or refresh rate. Changing modes is quite fast and painless, and in the OSD settings you'll find several different dual mode options. The default full wide option expands the 1080p image to the entire 32 inch panel, but there's also options that emulate a 27 inch or 24 inch panel size. There's no one to one pixel mapping mode, which would be tiny and probably not very useful at a sort of 16 inch configuration. Obviously, the 1080p 480Hz configuration is designed exclusively for fast-paced gaming. Text clarity and sharpness in this mode is pretty bad. In fact, it's downright awful if you're using the 27-inch or 24-inch modes. But when playing a game like CS2 or Apex Legends, that doesn't really matter. And the good news is that color performance, adaptive sync support, HDR functionality, and so on is all identical between the 1080p 480Hz and 4K 240Hz configurations. The only change really is the much lower resolution to gain access to the higher refresh rate. I was worried that maybe the dual mode would operate with a bunch of restrictions like you often see when using picture-in-picture -picture modes or different display scaling options, but that's not the case. It's actually more like you're switching over to using a normal 1080p 480Hz monitor with everything unlocked. At 480Hz, there's no change to response time, so the 480Hz configuration performs just like the 240Hz configuration in this area. About a 0.3 millisecond response time, no overshoot, great refresh rate compliance. There's also full adaptive sync variable refresh rate support, so you could use it all the way down to like 100Hz if you wanted to, but I imagine the priority will be pumping out super high frame rates. What's of most interest with this mode is motion clarity. At 480Hz with no black frame insertion, as that isn't supported, this is a very clear monitor, a step better than what we've seen from 1440p 360Hz QD OLEDs recently. Looking at the Blurbusters UFO test, the text for example is the most readable it's ever been, even in comparison to the 540Hz TNLCD PG248QP. Given you get this clarity with full adaptive sync and HDR support, I'd say this is the most versatile and possibly the best high motion clarity mode I've tested yet. With OLED typically offering around a 1.5x clarity boost compared to LCD at the same refresh rate, what we're seeing here should be equivalent to an LCD operating above 700Hz. Don't worry, the 4K 240Hz configuration also delivers excellent motion clarity, though it's basically the same as we've seen from other 240Hz OLEDs. I think the majority of gamers using this panel will stick to the 4K 240Hz mode most of the time, but if you need the extra clarity, the 480Hz mode is a great choice. The only legitimate challenger to a 480Hz OLED in motion clarity at the moment would be a 540Hz LCD with backlight strobing enabled, such as the PG248QP. It's actually a lot closer than I thought it would be, but in edge case scenarios, especially super fast motion, a strobed LCD does deliver superior clarity. With that said, backlight strobing on something like the pg 248 qp is highly restrictive. You have to sacrifice variable refresh rates in HDR, you have to run your game at a locked frame rate that matches the refresh rate for it to work properly, and typically we only see this performance from TN LCDs which have other issues like viewing angles. The 32GS95UE gives you great motion clarity in a much broader range of conditions, so this 1080p 480Hz mode is a big winner in my opinion. Impressively, there is no difference in processing delay using the 4K 240Hz or 1080p 480Hz modes. I recorded a 0.3 millisecond delay at 4K 240Hz and 0.5 milliseconds at 1080p 480Hz, both excellent results and shows this dual mode functionality is well tuned, not just a slow scalar side hack. As the 1080p 480Hz mode has a higher refresh rate, total input lag in that mode is lower as expected. It's a very responsive experience. You'll also see similar input latency in the HDR mode, no changes there. 
Power consumption, as with most OLEDs, is on the high side when displaying 200 nits full white. W OLED gets an advantage here due to its dedicated white subpixel. So relative to a QD OLED, power consumption in mostly white scenarios is around 35-40% to 40 lower. However, in other scenes where we don't see a white subpixel advantage, like a full screen Steam store homepage, power consumption is still around 47 watts, whereas this dropped to 32 watts on the QD OLED PG32 UCDM also showing the Steam store. It really depends on the APL of the content and what colors are being shown. The difference can range anywhere from W OLED being much more efficient to QD OLED being much more efficient. The color space on offer from this W OLED panel is identical to others we've seen over the last few years. The focus here is on DCI-P3 coverage. We get 96% coverage with this monitor, which leads to around 72% coverage of Rec 2020. This is the same as other W OLEDs, but not as good as QD OLED, which offers a higher 79-80% to coverage when we look at the recent crop of 4K models. When it comes to factory calibration, the 32GS95UE puts up decent results without being amazing. The CCT average is good, though slightly blue tinted, and gamma is slightly wonky, leading to a Delta E ITP average of 5.79. That's a little better than typical for a gaming monitor. However, like is the case with a lot of wide gamut monitors, this display ships without a gamut clamp enabled by default, so regular SDR content like YouTube videos is expanded up to fill the wide gamut the panel is capable of, leading to oversaturation. You're most likely to notice this in skin tones. Compared to other monitors, factory grayscale calibration is slightly better than average, which for this selection of comparisons puts it mid-table. It's a similar outcome to the Dell and MSI 4K QD OLEDs, though the ASUS PG32 UCDM is better calibrated. Color checker performance is also average. The lower color gamut of W OLED panels leads to less oversaturation relative to QD OLEDs that have a wider color gamut. This LG monitor comes with an sRGB mode, and it's good to see that some crucial functions like white balance are not locked down in this mode, although not everything is available. Unfortunately, the sRGB mode on my monitor, though, actually reduced grayscale accuracy compared to the default Gamer 1 mode, something that can be fixed by adjusting white balance. The gamut clamping though is quite effective, accurately emulating the sRGB Rec. 709 color space, leading to much lower and more accurate Delta E's than the default mode. The sRGB mode here isn't anything special compared to other models, particularly some of the QD OLEDs I've been testing recently. All three 4K QD OLEDs have excellent sRGB modes, but the 32GS95UE is average, suggesting LG haven't put as much work into calibration as the other OEMs using QD OLED panels. With that said, thanks to unlocked color controls, I was able to improve sRGB mode color checker performance to a delta E of 3.77, which is a good level of calibration. LG also offers hardware calibration, though with my consumer grade i1 Display Pro, I wasn't able to get as strong of a result. A nice to have bonus feature, but not a significant selling point. With a full calibration through CalMan, you can improve results further and get a nice accurate result, though it would have been ideal to see this in one of the included modes, especially given this is a high-end display. However, the hardware itself is conducive to calibration if you have the required tools to do so. SDR brightness is typical of this generation of OLED monitors. It's good to see the 32GS95UE offering 262 nits, which is one of the higher results, a large improvement compared to their previous W OLED, the 27GR95QE. However, this is not meaningfully brighter than competing QD OLEDs. Also, in the SDR mode, the automatic brightness limiter is disabled by default, capping brightness levels to around 260 nits regardless of window size. This is effectively the same behavior as uniform brightness modes we see on other monitors, which makes desktop usage much nicer than not having that feature. Minimum brightness is great at just 19 nits. Viewing angles from this W OLED panel are great, no concerns there whatsoever. Typically what you are getting is better than what you'll see from an LCD. Uniformity was okay, a good result in general, though dark grey content is still not as uniform as you get from a QD OLED. There's a bit of dirty screen effect here, not as much as you'll see from a 1440p W OLED, but still enough to be a noticeable downgrade compared to a QD OLED side by side. The 32GS95UE is an excellent HDR display. This is due to OLED technology's inherent hardware qualities that are tailor-made for displaying HDR content. The key feature here is that each individual pixel is self-lit, meaning at a pixel level the display can turn on or off to accurately display everything from dark shadows to bright highlights. When the display needs to show pure black, it can fully switch off, giving us the trademark rich zero-level blacks and deep shadows that OLED is known for. 
This is in contrast to most HDR capable LCD panels, which are not fully controllable at the pixel level. LCDs require a backlight, and for HDR displays, this typically means the use of full array local dimming, a technology that splits the backlight into zones. Whereas OLED can turn off each pixel individually, LCDs with local dimming can only turn off certain zones, encompassing hundreds or even thousands of pixels. This can still be effective for HDR content and look great, but it has some fundamental flaws in difficult circumstances. For example, when showing a bright and dark element close together, an OLED can control each pixel as needed with a clean, accurate distinction between bright and dark. LCDs with local dimming need to masterfully control the zones to achieve the necessary distinction between bright and dark, and when the element is too small or not in the optimal position, the bright element can spill into the dark area within the backlight zone, creating ugly, blooming artifacts. OLED therefore has the edge when it comes to displaying clean HDR content with minimal blooming or haloing. In some scenes, this will be the difference between raised blacks and deep blacks, such as for star fields and Christmas lights. At other times, OLED can have a brightness advantage for small bright objects within a dark scene. Subtitles will look cleaner on an OLED with reduced blooming, and generally OLEDs produce richer shadows thanks to its inherently higher contrast ratio. Aside from brightness and shadow detail, OLEDs also have other advantages for HDR. As there are no backlight zones, OLEDs are faster to transition between bright and dark with no visible zone transitions. OLEDs are much less likely to suffer from backlight flickering, although light PWM behavior, especially when using a variable refresh rate, is common, and OLEDs like this one do not increase input latency in its HDR mode as they do not need to run a backlight zone algorithm. Looking at the HDR modes and configurations, there's really only two that are worth talking about, the Gamer 1 mode in either the low or high peak brightness modes. This is a classic situation where the low mode is much more accurate but limits peak brightness, while the high mode is much less accurate but offers higher peak brightness. Ideally, the mode with the highest peak brightness is able to maintain good accuracy, but that isn't the case here. When looking at the low mode, peak brightness is capped to around 450 nits, but EOTF tracking is close to accurate, a little below the proper curve most of the time, but certainly good enough. Dark tracking is strong, though the grayscale delta E average is mediocre, while color accuracy is good without being outstanding. In the high mode, for a significant part of the EOTF curve, the 32GS95UE produces raised brightness, which you can see here at a 10% window size. This leads to a significant reduction in delta E accuracy, and in general, HDR content in this mode has a brighter appearance. Flicking between the two modes not only raises that peak brightness level, but also raises brightness in darker scenes, leading to less darkness in shadows. Increasing the peak brightness of the monitor should not also brighten every other part of the content shown on screen. It should only affect the highlights, extending the EOTF curve rather than raising the whole thing. Of course, the high mode does get much brighter. Here we're looking at around 1200 nits with a 2% window compared to 450 nits in the low mode. So that's a big change. Brightening everything is bad though when this is the only mode that achieves over 1000 nits. So you're basically left with a choice between brightness and accuracy. The issue with this, aside from being just a not ideal way to configure a monitor, is that the 4K QD OLED offerings give you the best of both worlds. You can have both high brightness and great accuracy with their included modes, and this puts the 4K W OLED behind the pack in HDR configuration. Full screen maximum brightness in the HDR mode is pretty good, offering between 270 and 280 nits in both modes, though this isn't drastically higher than QD OLED produces. At a 10% window, the 32GS95UE has similar brightness to QD OLEDs in the low mode, but is capable of around 500 nits in the high mode, slightly above QD OLEDs. Then at 2% window brightness, this is really where the LG model suffers when using the low mode, outputting just 460 nits. The high mode is capable of 1140 nits, around 15% better than a typical QD OLED. What I found interesting about the brightness of the 32GS95UE is that LG seemed to be copying the brightness versus window output of QD OLED rather than pushing this panel to the limits. This monitor follows a very similar pattern to the MSI321URX, whereas the PG27AQDM, a previous W OLED monitor, pushed itself to much higher brightness, around 10 to 5% window sizes, at the expense of lower full screen brightness. Even LG's previous 1440p W OLED monitor was capable of higher 10% and 25% brightness than the 32GS95UE, so it's a bit puzzling why LG would reduce brightness in that range with this new panel. 
There's mixed results when looking at real scene brightness. In the mid APL video scene, this W OLED panel performs well, offering 340 nits in both the low and high mode, which is similar to what we usually see from QD OLED. However, in a low APL scene, this monitor was only capable of 425 nits in the low mode and 603 nits in the high mode. While this isn't unusual compared to previous W OLEDs, it's a little disappointing that a monitor capable of 1200 nits for the smallest highlights can't get closer to QD OLEDs in this scene. Similarly, in our low APL edge test, I only recorded 762 nits compared to a minimum of 884 nits from a 4K QD OLED and up to 1000 nits in some cases. Then for gaming, again, these results were a bit underwhelming. Low APL real scene brightness of just 353 nits in the low mode and 717 nits in the high mode suggests LG need to put in some work to optimizing brightness and the EOTF curve. That's higher than some 1440p W OLEDs like the 27GR 95QA, but not on the level of QD OLED. Mid and high APL gaming results were also nothing amazing. Now I should note here that in real world content I was able to get up to a thousand nits after testing more scenes than I usually do, but this was pretty rare and more often brightness would top out in the 600 to 800 nit range. Based on this and the results you've just seen, I'd say that typically this 4K W OLED panel doesn't get as bright as the 4K QD OLEDs I've tested. When testing for color volume, I think I have a good idea why LG reduced 10% window brightness to around 450 to 500 nits. This improves their color volume when testing at a 10% window size. Previously, on the PG34WCDM, the panel will hit 785 nits white at a 10% window, but other colors will be much dimmer, so when measuring color volume relative to white brightness, the results come in much lower at around 45%. By reducing white brightness while maintaining the same brightness for colors, there's a better relative relationship between white and colors leading to better relative color volume. Here 69%, which is closer to, though still lower than QD OLED at around 73%. This has exposed a potential weakness in testing this way. If color brightness is limited, one way to inflate color volume is to lower white brightness. I retested W OLED and QD OLED color volume using a much brighter 2% configuration and found that QD OLED color volume remains basically identical at 73%, while W OLED color volume drops to 34%. This is also seen through much lower individual color brightnesses on W OLED than QD OLED. The main takeaway from this color volume testing is that these new 4K W OLED panels still have the same color volume and color brightness weaknesses as previous W OLED panels. For most colors, QD OLED panels can get substantially brighter, which continues to be an issue since the early days of these OLED technologies. Final section of this review is the new Hub Essentials Checklist 2.0. In the first part, we're assessing how accurate LG's spec sheet is and also providing some additional information ourselves. Mostly a good job here, though a few borderline results around P3 gamut coverage and factory calibration. I also think the bezels in the marketing images are slightly too thin relative to the real product I have in front of me. The second section is our feature support matrix. It's no surprise to see an OLED performing well in the motion and contrast areas with lots of green ticks, including a tick in the 480Hz box for the first time. I gave LG a borderline result for the sRGB mode due to its accuracy and still having some settings locked, and another borderline for RGB stripe text clarity. It's pretty close, but not quite there in my opinion. Some of the notable misses are support for Dolby Vision, the lack of USB-C input, weak EOTF tracking using the maximum brightness mode, and no burn-in warranty. However, other areas are handled well, like excellent input lag, including in the 1080p 480Hz mode, graceful SDR-HDR switching, and there's even built-in speakers which QD OLED alternatives do not include. Overall, the LG 32GS 95UE continues the trend of very good OLED monitors that have hit the market in this first part of 2024. There's a lot to like about how this monitor performs, and it's also been very interesting to test a 32-inch 4K W OLED panel this time, instead of the QD OLED panels that have dominated the early releases. What I really like about LG's approach with this panel, and the 32GS 95UE, is that they haven't looked to just copy what Samsung has been doing with QD OLED. Instead, the first proper monitor sized 4K W OLED panel offers a key feature difference. It's dual mode functionality, allowing the display to operate at 1080p with a much higher 480Hz refresh rate. I'm glad to say this feature genuinely works really well, much better than I was expecting. The 480Hz mode is ridiculously clear in motion, it works flawlessly with adaptive sync and HDR, and it's fast to change modes, plus, 
it offers the same color performance and input lag you get with the regular 4K 240Hz mode. This extends the flexibility and versatility of these OLED monitors to now include hardcore competitive gamers. You can really do anything on this display from beautiful, highly detailed single player gaming using the 4K HDR mode to fast paced competitive shooters at 1080p 480Hz. No matter the type of gaming, I think you'll find something to like about this monitor. We're also getting all the usual benefits of OLED monitor tech, such as its lightning fast pixel response times, deep zero level blacks per pixel local dimming, and excellent viewing angles. If this is your first OLED monitor experience, I think you'll be really happy with the color quality, contrast, and image clarity on offer here. This latest generation of W OLED panels brings with it several improvements compared to previous iterations, headlined by much better text quality. While perhaps not quite as good as an LCD at this size and resolution, the tweaked subpixel structure and improved pixel density lead to a much more usable and pleasant text experience suitable for everyday usage. In ideal scenarios, you'll also see higher peak brightness. A big decision that potential buyers will have to make is to whether to get this 4K 240Hz W OLED or one of the competing 4K 240Hz QD OLEDs that I've already looked at. There's quite a few differences between the 32GS 95UE and the QD OLED pack, which can be both a good or bad thing depending on what you're after. There are two main areas where I think getting the 32GS 95UE is the obvious choice. The first is if you want the 1080p 480Hz feature that's exclusive to these W OLED panels. Now there will be other W OLED monitors using this panel that will be offering this feature coming soon, but generally this is the biggest selling point here. If you're a competitive gamer or you do a mixture of gaming that includes, say, fast paced shooters, the dual mode feature works really well, so it's worth getting this display for that. Another major reason is the screen coding and composition. If you're typically using this monitor in a brighter environment and you want to preserve OLED blacks while minimizing mirror reflections, the matte coding on offer here is genuinely useful. This is a pretty controversial choice though. There are lots of people that swear glossy finishes are better, in which case QD OLED will serve those people better. On the other hand, I think QD OLED alternatives have some notable strengths that you don't get with the 32GS 95UE. All three of the variants that I've tested so far have been better calibrated in both the SDR and especially HDR modes, offering great EOTF tracking even using their highest brightness mode. That's not the case with this model where you have to choose between accuracy or brightness. The QD OLED models also typically get brighter in real scenes and have better color volume. There are other advantages too. For productivity users, text rendering on a QD OLED is slightly better, and all three models I've tested so far from ASUS, MSI, and Dell have offered a three-year burn-in warranty. There is no such warranty for the LG model listed on their website. The 32GS 95UE also lacks USB-C, a KVM switch, and Dolby Vision support, which can be found on some of its QD OLED competitors. The biggest weakness though might be its price tag. At $1400 US, the 32GS 95UE is priced above most QD OLED variants, which sit between $950 and $1300 US. I don't think LG have done enough to convince me it's worth a premium over the QD OLED models. In fact, in general, I'd say the QD OLEDs do a better job in more areas. Is the 480Hz mode alone worth a premium, especially compared to the notably cheaper MSI and Dell models? I'm sure it will be for dedicated competitive gamers, but for a typical buyer, maybe someone that won't use that mode very often, there's little else to point to that the W OLED model does better. In my opinion, at the very least, the 32GS 95UE needs price parity with QD OLED alternatives. If at the same price you could get the faster 1080p 480Hz mode of the W OLED model, or the better accuracy and brightness of the QD OLED models, well now it's a bit more of a tricky decision. I guess it's another example of there's no bad products, only bad prices, and I'm sure pricing will vary in different regions. It may be the case where in your region, W OLED and QD OLED 4K monitors are the same. So anyway, that's it for this review of the LG 32GS 95UE, a very long review, this one. There's been a lot to get through with the dual mode functionality, the color volume stuff, the brightness stuff. So yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed this thorough in-depth look at this monitor and how it compares to some of the QD OLEDs that we've tested throughout the early parts of this year. If you want to support the channel and the testing that we do on these products, then please do consider supporting us via Patreon or Floatplane. Links to those are in the description below. If you sign up there, you'll gain access to some cool benefits 
it's like the ICC profiles and settings that we use through the calibration process for these monitors. We also have our Discord community, a great place to chat about monitors and get recommendations. We've got BTS videos, monthly live streams, plenty of good stuff. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.